fought at that weight and plus he's been at that weight mm -hmm. you know for a long time he's actually you know had to lose weight to get to fight at the weight classes that he's been at but now he's probably more comfortable at the weight so boxing professionals have revealed their final picks for the matchup on saturday between raleigh romero and isaac cruz their picks have come unexpectedly with a huge sense of irony in them they have not only revealed their picks, but have also predicted the likeliest outcome of the match, whether it will be won by a knockout or if both fighters would take the long route to the scorecards. Let's hear them out. Doing, but it's just that he's new to that. And um, you know what I mean? So he's not he's not equipped to uh, be on time with all the uh, antics, I should say. Ahead of the title bout between Rolando Romero and Isaac Cruz, boxing professionals have revealed their picks and predictions. It's no news that Isaac Cruz, despite having one more loss than Raleigh Romero, although in way more fights, has been tipped as the favorite to defeat the world champion and take his place. However, Romero has been unfazed by this, claiming he was a worse underdog in the fight against Gervonta Tank Davis. In the bout, Romero put up a strong battle against the undefeated world champion. Sadly, an error from Romero opened him up to a sixth round knockout from Gervonta Davis. I, right even there. in the fight, I knew that I had him. You know, I mean, everybody knew. No, but people didn't know that like, he actually can hit, like, when his punches was like, like hard. You felt it? Yes. Was he the strongest punch you think you ever felt? Facts. Really? Yeah. As Raleigh Romero made the count, the referee noticed his awkward reaction to his instructions and deemed him unfit to continue the match. Gervonta Tank Davis won by a knockout. Both fighters have been victims of Gervonta Davis at different times, and it's interesting to see them lock heads, with Gervonta Davis making the very first pick. When asked by an interviewer about his pick for the upcoming bout, Gervonta said, I know many people think Raleigh Romero was that easy, and Cruz was my most difficult. Yeah, I understand that, but I was in the ring with them. And I think Romero's got a good chance to win if he's improved in one or two areas. Also, Gervonta Tank Davis was asked about his predicted outcome of the match, a knockout or they both see the match through. A late knockout. It won't be so easy, but I see a knockout. Heard Cruz hasn't been knocked out before, so that'll take some time, but I see it coming. Jeff Mayweather, known to be very liberal with his takes and opinions on matches, also made his prediction. More stronger than uh, Pitbull. You know, um, I've known, you know um, you've seen Roley for years. You've been around him since he was younger in the gym. Um, that power, like... Yeah, the small guy is good. Cruz can fight. There's so much to admire about him. But I think Raleigh Romero has a little edge over him. I'm sure it's going to be a close call. It will be very tight. Like Gervonta Tank Davis, Jeff Mayweather also predicted a knockout victory for Raleigh Romero. I think it'd be an unusual knockout, whichever round, but it'd be so shocking. The match will reveal the height of preparation of both fighters, and the smarter one will win. Also another member of the Mayweather family, Floyd Mayweather Jr., was questioned on what he thought about the matchup between Raleigh Romero and Isaac Cruz. Mayweather is known to take the unusual route in his predictions. Normally, since Raleigh Romero was the underdog, following the unusual route should be handing Isaac Cruz a support, but no. Floyd Mayweather supported the champion, Raleigh Romero, and tipped him to defeat Isaac Cruz. In his interview, Floyd Mayweather said, This year is truly a great one for fights, and there's so much still to come. This is a title bout that is surely among the great ones, and I'm so interested, yeah. For the match, I see Raleigh Romero winning. Romero is a crazy guy if you watch his fights. He's deserving of a title, and this is the best time to get one. Mayweather, like others, was asked to make his prediction as regards the outcome of the match. It's a full match, they'll see it to the very end, but Romero will have the upper hand, that's for sure. I remember when we were with him in the Martinez fight, the guy is surely a hero. Mayweather's prediction has been said to be a little biased considering Raleigh Romero has been under his promotions company. And while he made his pick, he highlighted the bout between Romero and Marinez. Over previously unbeaten Jackson Marinez, Rolando Raleigh Romero scored a controversial unanimous decision to capture the interim WBA lightweight title. 
The scores were 115, 113, 116, 112, and 118, 110, all in favor of Romero. The story of the fight centered around Marinez's reliable jabs as the Dominican fighter won the battle in that department, 14%, compared to Romero's 10%. It was Romero, however, who held the advantage on power punches connecting on 24%, 31 of 228, compared to 18% for Marinez, 72 of 401. Romero suffered a slight cut above his left eye in the ninth round on a headbutt, but it didn't seem to affect his performance in the championship rounds. He came out a little bit tougher and slicker than what I thought, but all he did was move around the entire fight. He didn't even try to engage. It's hard to knock out someone who doesn't try to engage. I heard him multiple times with body shots and a few hooks. There was one moment I heard him with a right hand and he pulled my head down. It was just hard to finish him off, Romero said. The 29-year-old Marinas, who held the WBA's number six ranking, was trained by Robert Garcia, who was not present in the Marinas' corner, electing not to travel cross-country from his Southern California home. Next to make his pick was the father of WBC super lightweight champion, Bill Haney. Bill, known to be very vocal and outspoken, also made his pick known and it wasn't the likely option. Bill said, that's a great match too. The thing about recent boxers is that they have too many matches. Though some are really good, they still aren't so far from the others. So it'll be a close one and I think Isaac Cruz wins this one. My respect for Cruz grew when I watched him fight Vargas. Bill Haney was queried on how he thinks the match will end. It's a 10th round knockout. They'll see it far, but it would suddenly get dangerous for Romero. Romero is good too, don't mistake me. I don't just see him retaining the title after his lucky win. Bill Haney spoke about Cruz versus Vargas, a match that was the talk of the moment during its time. Like Haney claimed, Isaac Cruz actually pulled some heroics to come out victorious. Isaac Cruz extended the number of his wins on the undercard of Jermal Charlo versus Juan Matias Montiel, defeating former super featherweight boxing world champion Francisco Vargas, giving Vargas his first loss at lightweight. The fight, however, may have been marred a bit by controversial moments in the 10th round, in which Vargas was busted open from a possibly intentional headbutt but allowed to continue, and the referee calling a subsequent slip a knockdown. Francisco Vargas suffered a nasty cut from headbutt, controversial knockdown as Isaac Cruz cruised to decision win. Cruz, who shot up the lightweight rankings in 2020 and punctuated his year with an electrifying first-round knockout over Diego Magdaleno in September, came out early looking for a similar result. Cruz continued to throw power punches, including his signature overhand right, but Vargas was able to avoid any devastating blows. It was the 36-year-old Vargas who was the more active fighter, throwing 586 punches compared to Cruz's 548. However, Cruz outlanded Vargas 188, 148, and landed 43% of his power shots en route to the victory. Then, Cruz clipped and troubled Vargas early on in the third, but the veteran recovered and worked the jab, though Cruz continued to keep control with his power, including a continued attack to the body of Vargas in the fourth. Vargas started to work his way back into things in the fifth, but the power of Cruz maintained. By the next round, however, Cruz's cardio started to come into question as Vargas looked to show some life and battle against Cruz's domination. The two fought close battles over the 7th and 8th round, and Vargas seemed to do better from in close, but Cruz's connections were still there and not going away. The 10th and final round, however, saw some controversy in Vargas being busted open by a clash of heads. Cruz consistently led with his head, resulting in a number of head clashes, including in the eventful 10th and final round, which led to a significant cut over Vargas's right eye that the Mexican warrior fought through. In the final minute of the fight, Cruz sent Vargas to the canvas for just the second time in his career with a barrage of punches, topping off an impressive performance. Vargas saw the final bell, but not before a slip was ruled a controversial, late knockdown by referee James Green. Eventually, the battle between power-punching Mexico City natives saw 23-year-old top lightweight contender Isaac Cruz score a wide, unanimous decision over former champion Francisco Vargas. The official scores were 100, 89, 99, 90, and 97, 92. What can I say? I'm elated. This was exactly the kind of fight we expected. 
Bandito was crafty and fought his fight, which allowed him to stay on his feet until the 10th round. Lots of embracing, but we knew how to manage it, Cruz said. We proved to be in top shape. Our conditioning paid off. I think fans were happy because this is what all of Mexico and the Toyota Center wanted to see. I think Vargas held on to me more than he's used to and couldn't put on the show he usually does, and we couldn't counter that. However, I value the fact that I learned that lesson, Cruz continued. Venezuelan boxing professional Ismael Barroso also made his pick for the match. Barroso lost his chance on the title both Romero and Cruz will be fighting for on Saturday. The loss was a controversial one, with Barroso claiming he was pushed to the ground for his first knockdown and was quick to stand the second time. Barroso, alongside countless fans and professionals, felt the referee ended the match abruptly and it was a very wrong decision. Notwithstanding, the events surrounding his loss wasn't hindering his decision making this time. Ismael Barroso was asked in an interview who his likely winner was and his answer was shocking. Romero, not because I fought him the last time, but I see him going as far as winning. All credits to Cruz as well, but Romero is my pick. I saw him since he fought Amatovs, not even my fight, and I knew he was a rising star. Rolando Romero continued the strong start to his pro career by knocking out Arthur Amatovs. Las Vegas's Romero, who was promoted by Floyd Mayweather's company, knocked down Amadovs twice in the second round and stopped his previously unbeaten opponent less than halfway into that round. Romero's victory came in the first fight on the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury undercard at MGM Grand Garden Arena. Referee Robert Hoyle halted their scheduled eight-rounder at 1.22 of the second round, with Amadov still standing taking punches when his back was against the ropes. The match saw Raleigh Romero improve to 11-0 and record his 10th knockout. The Armenian-born Amedovs of Delray Beach, Florida, slipped to five wins and a loss. Romero first floored Amedovs with a straight right hand after slipping a punch about 20 seconds into the second round. Amatovs fell flat on his back, but he beat Hoyle's count. A left hook by Romero knocked Amadovs down again several seconds later, this time to one knee. Amedovs reached his feet again, but he didn't fight back. That's when Hoyle stepped in to stop the bout. And then, predicting whether the match was a knockout or it would get to the scorecards, Barroso answered, Yeah, well, that's a little difficult, but since a knockout is very unlikely, I go for a knockout. The fact that Cruz hasn't been knocked out may be what Romero needs to be at his best. Romero made his professional debut on December 2, 2016, scoring a first-round technical knockout victory against David Courtney at the Sam's Town Hotel and Gambling Hall in Sunrise Manor, Nevada. Romero amassed an 8-0 record during the next three years, winning all but one of those fights by stoppage. Romero was next scheduled to face Andres Figueroa on April 20, 2019, on the undercard of the Danny Garcia and Adrian Granados welterweight bout. He won the fight by a fourth round knockout. Romero had his first step up in competition on November 1st, 2019, when he faced Juan Carlos Cordones. He won the fight by a first round knockout, stopping Cordones in the final minute of the opening round. Following the Martinez fight, Romero's next fight was against Avery Sparrow, who after the match expressed frustration when referee Johnny Callis stopped his fight against Rolando Romero in the seventh round. Sparrow's cornermen requested the stoppage because of the injury to his right knee that Sparrow suffered during the previous round. The Philadelphia lightweight was way behind 60, 51 on all three scorecards against a bigger puncher who was performing much better than in his previous appearance. However, Romero thought Sparrow should be thankful that their scheduled 12-rounder was stopped 43 seconds into the seventh round at Mohegan Sun Arena. His corner did the ring thing by stopping it, and then that last moment when they took away those last two points, he was hurt again, and there was a lot of time left in the round for him to get hurt even more. So, he's lucky that they stopped it at that moment, Romero said during a post-fight press conference. Sparrow surprisingly slugged with the harder-hitting Romero almost as soon as their fight started. Despite that Sparrow's boxing ability was considered his biggest advantage entering the first of three fights Showtime televised, Romero dropped Sparrow with a left hook just 40 seconds into their fight. Once Sparrow got up, he started throwing hard right hands at his taller, rangier opponent to try to keep Romero off of him. 
While Sparrow wasn't winning rounds, he showed toughness by battling Romero in the manner he did. Sadly, Romero didn't view Sparrow's performance the same way. He fought like a coward, he just wanted a street fight because he knew he wasn't going to do anything to me, he was frustrated and he couldn't do anything to me, so it just came down to a bunch of low blows, hits behind the head trying to wrestle me, trying to take me down, he hit me in the back, hit me everywhere, Romero said. Callis deducted two points from Sparrow for a low blow during the sixth round. Sparrow's rare two-point penalty for that foul, in addition to the first round knockdown, left him behind nine points on all three scorecards entering the seventh round. Sparrow agreed to fight Romero on approximately 30 hours notice, because Justin Paldo, Romero's original opponent, was removed from their 12-round bout for failing his pre-fight physical with the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation. Houston's Paldo also came in almost 5 pounds overweight for what was supposed to be a 12-round bout for Romero's WBA Interim 135-pound championship. His victory over Sparrow in their non-title fight was a redemptive performance for Romero to some extent. The 25-year-old puncher who was promoted by Floyd Mayweather won his previous bout by unanimous decision. That 12-round victory over Dominican contender Jackson Marinez on August 15th was considered controversial and left fans and media questioning Romero's potential. You guys say that you guys want to see me box, so I boxed. You know, I still stopped him, you know? And at the end of it, I made him quit. I made his corner make him quit. I made him quit. He fought like a coward, and I outboxed him. I boxed good, Romero said. Cruz, on the other hand, has also had a decent career. After amassing a professional record of January 1st, 19, Cruz took on former world title contender Diego Magdaleno on the undercard of Gervonta Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz on the 31st of October 2020 at the Alamodome in San Antonio, Texas. Cruz took just 53 seconds to stop Magdaleno in the first round of the bout. In his next fight on the 13th of March 2021, Cruz took on Jose Matias Romero in a WBA lightweight title eliminator at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. In a sloppy affair that saw Cruz docked a point in round 6 for a low blow, he prevailed by unanimous decision with scores of 114-113, 115-112 and 118-109 all in his favor. On the 19th of June 2021, Cruz took on former WBC Super Featherweight Champion Francisco Vargas on the undercard of Jermal Charlo versus Juan Macias Montiel. With 47 seconds left in the fight, Cruz landed a left-right combination that sent Vargas to the canvas. Although the latter was able to finish out the fight and hear the final bell, Cruz prevailed as the winner via wide unanimous decision with scores of 97, 92, 99, 90 and 100, 89 all in his favor. WBA regular lightweight champion Gervonta Davis had originally been slated to face Rolando Romero on the 5th of December 2021. However, when Romero was pulled from the bout due to sexual harassment allegations made against him, Cruz was announced as Davis's replacement opponent, marking the first time that Cruz headlined a pay-per-view show. The fight was a tightly contested affair, with the judges' scorecards reading 115-113, 115-113, and 116-112 in Davis's favor, resulting in the second loss of Cruz's professional career. Cruz rebounded from his loss against Davis on the 16th of April 2022, when he knocked down former unified featherweight champion Yuriorkis Gamboa multiple times en route to a fifth round technical knockout victory at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas on the undercard of Errol Spence Jr. versus Jordanis Ugas. In his last bout before this, Cruz settled for a 12 round split decision win on the Errol Spence Jr. and Terence Crawford undercard at T-Mobile Arena despite the fact that he caught Cabrera with flush punches during most of their bout Cruz nevertheless improved to February 1st, 25, 17 KOs. Cabrera lost for the first time in seven years as a pro, 21, 1, 7 KOs. Cruz appeared tired and didn't throw many punches during the 12th round. He couldn't have known though that their fight was as close on the scorecards as it was. A left hook by Cruz caused Cabrera to hold him with just under 140 on the clock in the 10th round. Cabrera caught Cruz with a straight left several seconds before the ninth round ended. Cruz landed a right uppercut and then a right to the side of Cabrera's head a little less than 30 seconds into the ninth round. 
a right hand by Cruz buzzed Cabrera just before the eighth round ended. Cruz's right hand landed flush with 1.15 to go in the eighth round. Barely 10 seconds later, Taylor called for time and took a point from Cruz for headbutting Cabrera while trying to break a clinch. A sweeping left hook by Cruz landed with about 40 seconds remaining in the fourth round. Cabrera took that shot well, but he couldn't land any of his own hard punches to keep Cruz from coming forward. Cruz caught Cabrera with a right hand to the side of his head out of a clinch with just under 110 to go in the third round. Taylor warned Cabrera at the halfway point of the second round for pushing down on Cruz as Cruz came forward. Cruz connected with a left hook about 105 into the second round. Judges Benoit Roussel, 115-112, and Don Trella, 114-113, scored their fight Cruz, who had a point deducted by referee Thomas Taylor in the eighth round for headbutting Cabrera. Judge Glenn Feldman scored Cabrera a narrow winner, 114-113, but he would have had it even if not for Cruz losing a point for his aforementioned foul. Cruz and Romero both have impressive records, and what Saturday will do is to show whose record becomes more impressive. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button below. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.